All right, guys, welcome back. This is the last few steps here. I am working on the belt cover. Um, I ended up taking the only sticker that was on it off. Uh, just kind of heated it up with a heat gun and then just used a real nice sharp razor and slowly ran it underneath with the air blowing across this way once it was heated up well. It did pretty good. Uh, these are just the bushings that come out of the end here for the hinge. And then this is the um, latch wire so for the cotter pin there. So I ended up, uh, I hit this with some bicarbonate of soda. Uh, that came pretty clean. Um, and then I taped it up and then I hit it, I hit the whole thing in the sandblaster. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I already degreased it. I hit it with just a light run over of my tack cloth. And uh, that helps to get any lint from the uh, paper towel. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same stuff here. I use this epoxy paint. It's a single stage by VHT. Candle up to 250 degrees. It's resistant to rust and salt. Doesn't need primer. It's all weather. I mean, it's good stuff. Takes like a full... I mean, yeah, you can handle it in like three hours, but it takes like a full seven days to cure before it's um, resistant to chemicals and stuff like that. So... But yeah, that's um, that's what I'm gonna do with this. So once I get that all uh, painted up, I will bring it back and show you guys the results. All right, so here's the first coat. It's just a light coat. Uh, I'm sure you guys know how to paint. Um, you know, you just want to put a light coat on there that's uh, you know pretty much just starts adding texture and a layer of. If you want to look at it like that, splatter and dimension for the other coats to stick to. Um, but with the the sandblasting there, it added to some pretty good texture as it was. So, all right, that's the first coat, and I will come back for the finishing coat. All right, guys. So this is what I found on the. Uh, let alone the color being weird on the exhaust. There's like a bluish tint to it. I don't think I, it's got to be the clear coat for some reason didn't do that on my wife's and it's really weird though because it's like all that's black but then that and then part of the exhaust almost has like a like a bluish tint to it I mean it's kind of cool looking but <laughs> I kind of want it black <laughs> but uh anyway this is what I found I found I saw this crack here but I thought it was just this plate so lo and behold um it's actually not the plate This is what I should have done. You can barely see a little crack there. Or is that just light? No, that's yeah, that's light coming into a crack. So, and I noticed it because after running this thing, it's spewing out there. So. Yeah, that's what I gotta fix. So I got a sample, I pulled it off, sandblasted it in um, that one spot. I'm just gonna go ahead and fix it real quick. Uh, and then uh, I'll probably just sandblast it and hit it again. Should be good to go. And then I'm still waiting on the, um, the belt cover to dry. I don't know if I should hit this stuff again or what. I mean, it's been long enough try hitting it with black again so I'm just not happy about that it's protected and all but still I don't know well I'm definitely gonna hit this again because I you know I gotta hit this with black so I'll see what happens on this and then if it does well then I'll hit the exhaust or the pipe or whatever the uh that's kind of got a bluish tint to it as well it's really weird it's got to be the clear coat and it's a satin, but it did find in my wife's. I mean, maybe it was just a crappy, a crappy batch. I don't know. But um, maybe I'll call VHT and see if they will hook me up. Cause um, yeah, I'm not happy with that. <clears throat> and I took, I did the same procedure as I did 
on this as I did on my wife's 580ZR. So, all right, that's it. I'll be back. All right, guys. Well, everything happens for a reason. Um, I'm not sure if I said this in the last video or not, but this was coming right from the tank. And I anchored it with a zip tie. I thought I anchored it, but evidently I didn't anchor it very well. Um, so you see this zip tie here, and then I zip tied this fuel line right there. And well, that zip tie I found down here, and you can see all this dust. It's actually from this fuel line. So I'm guessing what happened is it it came out, there was enough slack to where it came out and it was rubbing against the back of the, the uh, driven clutch there. So, so glad that I caught, or that, not that I caught it, but then, yeah, that I caught it because I was kind of just poking around, checking things out. Because I'm going to end up having to get under here and take off the oil line so I can uh, crimp that off and then run another oil line to a burn, I think it's called a burnet, a burnet, something like that. But it's basically just a big long tube that's like 25 milliliters or 25 cc's volume and then I'll put oil on that and the line and then I'll turn it, warm the sled up and check the oil that way. Um, at 3,000 RPMs with the dial all the way closed, so I'll have to disconnect that guy down there and then um, run it at 3,000 RPMs with it like that and then 3,000 RPMs with it all the way open. And then see how much oil output I have. So the pump is pumping fine. Um, it doesn't seem like it's putting out too much, too much oil. Uh, I don't think I'm going through a whole lot you know, more than normal for the 10 miles that I put on it, so. Um, once I check that, I'll be able to determine if I'm gonna have to replace some check valves, because if it's not putting out at, at low RPMs, like it should, it's supposed to be like 1.6 to 2.3 cc's or milliliters after three minutes in the closed position like that at 3,000 RPMs, so. I'm gonna test that stuff. So I was poking around, like I said, and found this. And I probably wouldn't have found it if, well, I think I would, but maybe not in time if the recoil went. And it's funny because I was hoping that I was gonna get the, the clutch, this primary here, in time to take the sled up north. And I didn't, it got lost in the mail. So I don't know about you guys, you can call it a coincidence, but I attribute it to God. It's just looking at I think he was just looking out for me so because I mean if I took this thing up north and for one the recoil would have went on the trail but that probably would I wouldn't even have known that until I stopped and wasn't able to start it but at this rate I don't even know if I would have got that far because this would have rubbed right through and oil uh, fuel and fuel everywhere I don't know if it would have ignited who knows what would have happened so Praise God for that. That's all I got to say. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. Uh, that's pretty crazy. So, I am going to tighten all this up. I may actually, I don't know if I'm going to run this supply line up through the middle of the carbs or what. But, yeah, pretty crazy. So, I just figured I'd show you guys that. I'm going to go get, uh, I'm probably just going to end up getting a, a brass valve to join these two together. So, I wanted to cut this piece off and go up there and fit it. It's a 5 16th, I think, so. Should be good to go, but all right, I'll be back. All right, guys, welcome back. This is the finished product. Turned out pretty good. I mean, there's some bend marks. I mean, this was pretty much destroyed right here, and I just, I tried to do the best I could. I wasn't about to hit it with, I guess I could have hit it with like some primer, maybe some Bondo or something, but it's a character, right? But, it's good top and bottom. There was a lot. That was pretty dented up. Um, that was all rusty there. And you can see it's got a little busted piece there. But, <clears throat> a belt broke. 
in this thing. So, you know, it's a lot straighter than it was. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, going to put the label on here. It says roller chassis. it. No, got to put in the bushings here. It's just your regular round of plastic bushings. All right. show you guys that real quick. That's the repair right there. You can see the, the bead. I did it on both sides. Uh, it's all sealed up nice. And I went ahead and I had a blue tint going on to the exhaust for some reason. I don't know what it was. Maybe I didn't let it cure long enough before I started up the slide. I thought I did though. I don't know what the situation was. Personally, I think it's the clear coat that was doing it because you can see a little bit. See how there's a blue tint to the muffler there? Well, it's not really much of a muffler, but that thing, the can, um, it should be more like this. On my wife's 580, it turned out real nice. It's not as satiny as this. It's more like this, but it stayed like that. It didn't get like a blue tint to it. One thing that I noticed is when I was painting this whole pipe, you know, I took the shield off, wire wheeled it, sandblasted it, excuse me, and when I started painting it, I noticed after the second coat, when it started drying, you know, you gotta wait 10 minutes in between coats, I noticed there was like a, almost like a little white powder or something that was coming through, I don't know what it is, I mean, it's, it's something new to me, I'm sure it's pretty common, but it's something new to me, I didn't know what it was. So, I can only assume that it's, it was just maybe, I don't know if it was showing through on the rest of the pipe or what, or if it was just a coincidence, um, you know, as far, because it was, the finish on this wasn't fully white, I think the clear coat, something happened to the clear coat, that's what I'm going to boil it down to, so. And then uh, one other issue is, oh, I got the fuel, fuel line all redone i just got a brass i cut it shorter so it doesn't you know it can't go out any further and i used a brass coupler double male coupler to uh put that back together but yeah everything is looking good uh, i took the clutch off so i wanted to put the i gotta tighten the secondary clutch up so the secondary clutch is 24 pounds. Yeah, this clutch, I mean, no wonder why they blew why they blew a belt or kept blowing belts, who knows? Because I'm not sure if you can see it. But um let me tighten this real quick. Okay. So, and you'll see what I have, I've done. I mean, gosh, I put like eight spacers in there. Those are machine bushings. But they didn't have any of those in there. And I had to put washers here as well. 
to take up this to take up the space because it's supposed to be able to move an eighth of an inch back and forth. Well, this thing was offset so bad. I mean, it was. I mean, it was probably. It was over here. I mean, it was to the right. Oh gosh, a half inch. <laughs> I mean, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, that's all lined up. Um, there was a big, huge, I mean, this whole area was just blown out because the belt blew and just ripped up all that. This foot panel down here was all, let's see if I get some light in there. Okay, so that, you can see some of the bang marks. But this was, I mean, this whole center portion was caved in like, gosh, an inch easy inch and a half so bang that back out um, this was halfway ripped off so uh, flatten that out re-riveted it and uh, yeah I mean there's just a bunch of different things that I had to do the next thing which I'm not gonna be able to use the thermostat that was on here the, the coolant temperature because I called what is it? Let's put this down. Okay, so anyways, the the uh, the, the thermostat, not the thermostat, but the uh, the, the temperature gauge, cooler temperature gauge, uh, was by a company called I Equus. I think it's iAquas.com. And it's, there's a hollow tube that goes from the sensor here. And it goes out, it came out all the way around and, you know, went up. And it's right here. Well, I didn't know, I just needed to get the hood off. I cut the sucker. Well, I thought it was a wire. It's actually a tube. And the tube is filled with ether. And so I called the company, asked them about it, and I, you know, because I didn't know how it worked. I'm not going to be able to use this. Uh, there's, I mean, I would have to get some type of coupler for that tube, and I mean, it would have to fill. Yeah, I just can't do it. There's no way. So that's pretty much junk. I won't be able to use that. So it's too bad. Whatever. Looks pretty the way it is. Um, not a big deal. I'm going to end up getting the regular thermostat sensor that goes there. And I got the wire here, and I also have an end that goes on there. It's just the single 90 degree elbow that's fitting that slips over the end of the original. I believe I have an original as well. So that's really the only thing left. Um, I might pop these grates off, sandblast them, and hit them with a fresh coat of orange to spruce those up, and then uh, just your general wipe down I mean this stuff I mean it looks like there's a lot of this foam coming off it's not really that big of a deal but and then the only other thing that I'll do um, uh, actually I want to get a seat cover so that'll come eventually I don't know so that's something that I'm gonna have to check out either way I don't think the oil pumps bad it pumps out good um, Either way, but yeah, the last thing I'm waiting on are the decals. And I have some, I just don't think that I want to put those on here. But other than that, see, yeah. And you know, they're orange, but I'd like to get them a little bit brighter. That's the chrome windshield that I put on there. I had to replace a couple of these uh, well nuts. And they're just rubber. It's like a, a rubber that's grommet almost. It's got a cow, it's got a flange on it. Slip it in the hole. Threads are at the bottom. It's 1032 threading. So when you push, when you screw the uh, the little machine screw in, it squishes up. It squishes up that that well nut, and it grabs on the back. So this thing's not in the best condition. I, mean, I might be able to polish that out. But, um, you know, it's got some scuffs, but, you know, I'm on a budget <laughs> with this build, so the important stuff is done. It looks 
I like it. It looks awesome. I'm happy with it. Uh, but I got that hood and this chrome windshield for 75 bucks together. So, boom. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. Just need some general cleaning. Uh, and then just a few more little tidbit things. Everything else is uh, good to go though. New bumpers on there. There is, I did my best here to heat that up and pound it you know, back into where it, you know, it wasn't looking like it got hit, so. But the thing runs great. I mean, the throttle, comparatively to my other sleds, is these ZR3 throttles are just better. And it's because of the throttle bodies and the carburetors. The springs are, you know, it's only got one spring. And it's a small spring instead of two big, you know, long ones up that are like five inches long. So you got less tension. And uh, yeah, and it's funny because it just makes the whole sled, I mean that and the power of this sucker just makes the whole sled feel so much lighter. It's crazy. Ugh. But yeah, that's it. Like I said, I'm gonna go to my girl, Evelyn Farrell. She's gonna hook me up with a seat. I just gotta send her some pictures, seat cover. And then we'll be good. Eventually I'm sure I'll probably Polish this out. I'm keeping this sled for sure. This is, yeah, this is a pretty sweet sled. So that is just about it, folks. Um, I will keep you up to date um, and go from there. All right, we will talk to you guys pretty soon. So like, subscribe, comment. I'm always looking for you know ways to improve my methods here. So. And then, you know, sharing social media with friends and family you think would, you know, get a kick out of the build and uh, what I'm doing here. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video. So, come on back.